Hi, welcome to Facts in 5, Crediting Grains, brought to you by the Nebraska Department of Education Child and Adult Care Food Program team. I'm Katie Parch, Registered Dietitian and member of the CACFP team. Before we get started, I just wanted to remind everyone that the CACFP requires all grain products be made with enriched or whole grain meal or flour or bran or germ, and we'll talk more about those as we get into identifying some tools that we hope you'll use in the program. So any grain you're serving to meet meal pattern requirements has to meet the requirement as you see outlined in the citation on the slide you see here. So speaking of some tools we hope you use, we want to make sure you know how to utilize the rule of three when it comes to identifying creditable grains. We'll also talk a little bit about identifying non-creditable grains and whether or not foods that contain those are allowed in the program. And finally, we'll take a look at a couple of examples that really help us put utilizing the rule of three and identifying non-creditable grains to work. Let's get started with that rule of three. In the rule, the first ingredient must be a grain, or that grain can be second, but second only to water. That grain must be a whole grain or an enriched grain. And the two following grains in the ingredient list have to be whole grain, enriched grain, bran, or germ. So when it comes to crediting grains in the CACFP, really we want you paying attention only to the first three grains in the ingredient list. And to reiterate the rule of three, that first grain has to be whole or enriched. It can be second only to water. And the next two grains have to be whole, enriched, bran, or germ. So some creditable grains you'll probably see in an ingredient list the most frequently include the ones in the list here. And I took this list from the whole grain resource um, that's been offered to the National School Lunch Program, but the grain rules between the two programs, School Lunch and CACFP, are the same. So I thought it would be a nice resource considering we don't have one dedicated specifically to CACFP, at least not at this point in time. And I've utilized it quite a lot when answering questions about credibility of grain products in the CACFP. So take a quick look at this list, maybe jot these down or take a picture of it with your phone so that you can have it as a handy resource whenever you need to identify grains in an ingredient list. You also might see some non-creditable grains, including things like food starch or bromated or durum flour, white flour, other starches like wheat starch, corn starch, modified food starch, or any type of potato flour. So none of those are creditable as a grain in um, the CACFP. However, these ingredients are allowed as long as they're found in amounts of 2% or less. So if you've got a grain that's got three grain ingredients that are all a mixture of whole or enriched uh, bran or germ, Further on down the ingredient list, you see that 2% or less, um, and this is included in that 2% or less list, it's still okay because those ingredients would contribute such an insignificant um, portion to the total grain in the product that it would be all right. And when it comes to fortified grains, that's kind of a different term we're throwing out there. Remember, we've talked about enriched grains and whole grains. Fortified grains are where you've added some vitamins and minerals, typically uh, some mixture of B vitamins and then the mineral iron. In that case, where you might see this with like a pasta or a breakfast cereal, there's no need to utilize the rule of three. And we'll talk about how to identify whether or not that pasta or breakfast cereal, for example, has been fortified. And here's an example right now. Do you think that this credits in the CACFP? Remember, we don't have to utilize the rule of three if we can see that the product has been fortified. And as you can see on the right-hand side of this slide, we see a very long list of vitamins and minerals, reduced iron, and then a very big list of B vitamins, even vitamin D and folic acid has been added to this cereal. So we don't really need to utilize the rule of three. If we did use it, we would see that the first ingredient is corn, which is neither whole nor enriched. But 
the saving grace here is that you've got a list that identifies that the food has been fortified with some vitamins and minerals. What about this next example of a breakfast cereal? Does it credit? Yes, it does. The first ingredient is whole grain. The second ingredient is not whole, nor is it enriched, but we see that we do have that fortification list that includes iron, niacin, zinc, uh, B6, and vitamin B1, as well as folic acid. So this breakfast cereal is creditable in the program, even though those grains in the ingredient list are not all whole or enriched. So that's a yes. In fact, it credits as whole grain rich. What about this pasta example? We see the first ingredient is semolina. It does not identify whole or enriched in front of the word semolina. And the same applies to the durum flour. It's not identified as either whole or enriched. So those things alone would mean that this pasta is not creditable in the program. However, we see a pretty lengthy list of vitamins and minerals that have been added, and they're identified right there in the ingredient list. The B3, B1, B2, folic acid, and iron are all here. So we would consider this to be a fortified pasta, and thus it is creditable in the CACFP. If you have additional questions regarding crediting um, grains in the program or utilizing the rule of three, identifying whether or not non-creditable grains make up too large of a proportion or percentage of a grain product, or how to identify whether your grain a product like a pasta or cereal is fortified, please don't hesitate to contact me at the email address or phone number on the slide here or any number uh, member of the CACFP team. We hope these tools help you make sure you're being compliant with the regulations. Thanks.